G'day, I'm Dr. Paul Mason, and welcome to Germs and the Big Lie, unmasking the root causes of heart disease. Today, we're going to reveal what's the real cause of atherosclerosis, the process leading to fatty deposits inside your arteries. You're going to learn about what happens to rabbits when they get injected with LDL, which is not much, and the difference between dental plaque and coronary artery plaque, which again is not much, except perhaps for the location. We'll also see how pigs who have bacteria that can cause gum disease injected into a vein develop heart disease in a process which actually mimics what happens to many of us every day when we brush our teeth. You'll also see that clotting or thrombosis may not play a huge role in how thrombosis starts, but it sure can make a difference to how it ends. And amongst all this, you'll learn about the key role that the chemical process of oxidation, which is like rust inside your body, plays in causing atherosclerosis and heart disease. And we'll touch on many of the different environmental toxins which are associated with atherosclerosis including microplastics, forever chemicals, pesticides, and heavy metal pollutants. In summary, you will learn that both oxidation stress and infection can damage the inside lining of the arteries, which is coated with something called the glycocalyx. And this is what starts the process of atherosclerosis. Before we get into all of this, however, we need to do a little bit of myth busting. According to the Heart Foundation of Australia, the nation's peak authority on cardiovascular prevention, high cholesterol is a leading modifiable risk factor for coronary heart disease. In fact, their website clearly states that cholesterol can stick to the walls of your arteries and create blockages. This is essentially the lipid heart hypothesis which is the theory that elevated levels of cholesterol in the blood, largely due to dietary saturated fat, lead to fatty buildups in arteries called atherosclerosis. Based on this theory, the American Heart Association still recommends limiting saturated fat intake to less than 6% of total calories. It was the Austrian British philosopher, Karl Popper, who said that if the predictions made by a scientific theory are falsified, in other words, proven wrong, the theory dies, and the predictions made by the lipid heart hypothesis have been proven very, very wrong. Let's begin with the underlying assumption that dietary saturated fat increases LDL, a claim echoed by the Australian Dietary Guidelines. This belief, which is something of a sacred cow that cannot be questioned, has in fact never been proven. Rather, when it has been tested, as it was in this randomised trial, it has been conclusively disproven. This study looked at the impact of three fats, and coconut oil containing 94% saturated fat was found to reduce LDL, not increase it. The fact is, the saturated fat content of various fats and oils seems to bear no correlation with their effect on LDL. But the debate on whether or not saturated fat increases LDL becomes all but meaningless anyway when you consider there is no compelling evidence that high LDL levels cause heart disease anyway. This systematic review looked at 19 prospective studies with over 68,000 participants and subjects with the highest LDL levels actually lived the longest. In fact, 16 of the 19 studies found this relationship. Data from the International Interheart Study reveal that 72.1% of individuals who were admitted for heart attack actually had LDL levels below 3.4 millimoles, or 130 milligrams a deciliter. And this study found that statin-taking subjects with the lowest cholesterol levels were, in fact, more likely to die. Predictably, then, large-scale randomised controlled trials the best form of research we have on this topic, have repeatedly found that lowering saturated fat intake does not reduce heart disease. In other words, atherosclerosis is not caused by saturated fat 
in the diet. This 1965 study, some heart attack survivors randomly received a supplement of corn oil. After two years, 48% of those receiving the corn oil had had a repeat heart attack, compared to only 25% not receiving the corn oil. The corn oil almost doubled the risk of heart attack. The next study was much closer to home, the Sydney Diet Heart Study. This was a randomised control trial examining the effect of replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat in men who'd had heart attacks. And it found that in those Australian males who increased their intake of polyunsaturated fats, well, they were more than 62% more likely to die. A similar finding to the Minnesota coronary experiment. This was a double-blinded randomised controlled trial on more than 9,000 men and women. And again, subjects who replaced saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats faced an increased risk of death. Now, predictably, subjects taking the seed oil, the extra seed oil, did see a lowering in their LDL not because of changes in the saturated fat per se, but because this is what certain components of seed oils do. They interfere with normal cholesterol absorption. The greater the fall in the LDL, however, the greater the increase in mortality. As clear a repudiation of the lipid heart hypothesis as you will ever see.